Thank you so much for being out here for See No Evil. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome back to the stage the filmmaker Charlie Curran, uh, and then we have some special guests that we're also like to bring up. So Charlie, if you can join me uh, back on stage. Uh, come on down. And uh, I know you have lots of people that you want to uh, bring up as well, uh, I believe, right? Um, do you want to do the honors? Do you, know you want to uh, name the, the folks that are coming up with us? Yeah, absolutely. So the people that are going to join us for the Q&A are Richard Pandicio, uh, Michael Flutie, uh, Mutali Kanyanta, and Sean Rudo, as well as Matt Linsky from the Ski Crew, all of which were in the film you guys just saw. Excellent. Welcome all of those uh, fine folks up here. Excellent. So uh, as they join us, um, I'm going to start off with just a couple questions for you, and then we're going to open it up to the audience. But um, come on, come on up. Uh, I, you know, I'd love, Charlie, I know this, this has been a project long in the works. Um, can you tell us a little bit about sort of what brought you to learn about David's work and to become involved with this project, and also just how long it's taken for you to get to this point? Yeah, um, so seven years in the making. <laughs> um, Seven years since I found Dave's story by chance when I was at school at the Savannah College of Art and Design. I was at the school library and I happened to stumble across his photographs. They were out on the table in the library and it like clicked for me and I was, it was, I was, it was shocking because I was like, I'm a student making student work and this is a 20 year old, who, you know, like my age when I started, I was like, he's making art, like capital A art. And I had to figure it out. And then mm. the first thing I figured out was that there's all this media controversy surrounding his death and the family, you know, afterwards to protect him t took away, like, access to his work and, and I just, I needed to figure it out. And so, not knowing anybody any better, I emailed Mario and told him, you know, I'd never made a documentary before, yeah. but I was going to be making this documentary on David and that's how it all kind of started. And eventually Fran made me a list and she said if I spoke to these people, I'd have the, the real story, so... That's Excellent. Well, you, you did a fantastic job, and I'd love to talk to the, the people that knew David and, and um, were part of this film. If you can talk a little bit about sort of becoming involved with this project and sort of what you wanted to share about David with the world and sort of reintroduce him to everybody. Well, I think I'd say just great job and congratulations uh, on bringing this all together. I know you've been working on it for a long time, and it's, it's really nice to have this, this completed. Um, I, I also to say, to add to that, um, the fact that you did come out of nowhere, you know, it wasn't like, I mean, where did you come from? <laughs> Savannah, Georgia, yeah. Savannah, Georgia. And, and it, it, it pulled you here. It brought you here. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe to say like, like Domino's, you, you've got friends, okay, you know, she co-signed you. And then you talk to Justin or Matt and Alex and, and Michael and everyone and, and it's and to we put our faith in you to tell the story that I think we weren't ready, capable. Uh, maybe there was still pain there. We weren't able to tell that story and for you to come and and you know, like Mila said, like it, it changed you. His work, his life changed you. And uh and so, yes, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I want to congratulate you, Charlie, because, uh, you know, like, like you just mentioned, it was very difficult even, even then when you interviewed us. To, it was, it, by interviewing so many different people, and uh, I learned things about David that I had not known before, and to be able to weave this all together again, I think, is a... a you know, it was great for me as a somebody who knew David, but you really, I think, portrayed a really good, <laughs> um, beautiful film. Congratulations. Wonderful. Um, I thought what was really interesting for me was um, when you got introduced to us, it was through Fran, um, and that for me was, if Fran says, you're cool, okay. So I didn't really know what to expect. Um, but what was really fascinating was the fact that you had discovered David. And, you know, David's, for, my, for myself, David captures a very specific moment in time um, in New York and in my personal life. Um, so I'd kind of put it aside um, to a certain extent. Um, so when we started talking about the work and your excitement, it kind of um, 
you reminded me of him in that way because you were so confident um, and you were so professional when we did the interview and I did the interview and I completely forgot about it. But looking at it, I'm realizing what just careful questions you asked and the way that the narrative threads through all our different voices, you are leading the conversation. And I just, you know, it's just an amazing excavation of who David was. I, I, I know a lot more about David from just having experienced the film. And I, you know, you never know people completely, but I thought I knew David quite well. So congratulations, it was really amazing. Thank you. Hey. So I think um, one of the things that we all want to have in life is have a purpose. And when I first met you, I really felt like this man had um, a quality about him that really pulled the essence of who we are and who uh, David is and always will be. And David lived with an imperfection in his life that he actually turned, and every single person that he photographed, he pulled that out of them. And it's no coincidence. Like, that is what I really believe. Like, every single person, when you look at those images, they represent the, the pain, but they also represent something so incredibly powerful and so magical and so big. Um, and you did that. You did that with this movie, and it's a really great honor to be a part of it. Thank you so much. It's wonderful. I don't know if we answered your question, but that was great. What Absolutely. was the question? That that was just sort of your your. I mean, I was really trying to get at what you guys addressed, which is revisiting this time period and sort of revisiting uh, David and sort of what you wanted people to remember about David. Yeah, yeah and of and just to see him again. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't have a copy of the the interviews, um, and just to see him gangly and topless you know and picking his lip and and all those things these little things that he did uh that i never will forget and to see it and 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 you know it's you it does say something and it it is powerful but it is also a love letter um to my friend you know to our, to someone who is very special um not just to us but a, a lot of people um what's the next one that's good um <laughs> I would, um, I, you know, we have a limited amount of time, so I want to make sure you have uh, some chance in the audience to ask questions. So don't be shy if you've got a question you want to address to anyone up here. Uh, do raise your hand. Otherwise, I can keep going. But right. I, I want to ask about I want to ask about access to all of the archival work, all of the photographs, all of those fantastic uh, uh, film uh, videos and stuff like that. Talk a little bit about sort of gathering all that. Where you got it from? Was it from the family, friends, um, and sort of that process of sort of putting it all together? Yeah. So. So many people have like come together and helped us put this together. It was the entire like community, like all of David's friends, and it was Francesca, you know, like bringing his archives back out, and her and I starting to like the process of digitizing them because it all is analog. Yeah. And I was shocked by how prolific his work was because like not much of it was published, but he always had a camera with him, and it's this entire history of New York that's just like being seen for the first time. I feel like. And I worked like you know like with Vanina, and she had been studying actually at SVA at the time, and so she like I think maybe like six years into making the film, she was like, "Hey, I have 70 rolls of Super 8 and Super 16 and 35 that have never developed right. some of it before. Like we should take a look at that." And and all of this incredible footage came out. Sean, some of it's Sean's footage. I mean, there's so many people in the audience here that right. have helped contribute. It was it was from everywhere, really. It, 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 I think also about that time and about D David and, and Mario and, and uh, growing up in that moment, I think we were all a little uh, in love with capturing mm. each other and, and the moment and documenting New York and skating and graffiti, all of it was very exciting to us. And so we would constantly take photos. And so, yeah, obviously Fran has an archive that is the, the appropriate word. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, excavating all this other stuff and finding things that we all have and, and, and handing it over yeah. was part of it, yeah. 
Um, and I want to ask, like, in terms of getting, uh, obviously this film is a fantastic way of doing so, of getting David's work out there, but um, what about access to, the, to his photographs and stuff like that? Is there a plan to sort of get those out in terms of, in a publication, online, anything else that you can talk about in terms of any plans of getting his work to the larger public? Sure, yeah. I know that Francesca and I have talked about this for years now, and I know that she would like to, like, reprint some of his work, but I don't want to overstep her. Sure, like, sure. That's, you know, like, she has a very specific plan for how she wants to do it, but... Yeah, absolutely. Great. And exhibiting it as well, yeah. Excellent. Um, I'd l we have about maybe five minutes left, so I'd love to uh, have time for questions uh, from the audience. Uh, yes, please, back there. So this guy over here is saying he knows Matt's brother, his little brother. So now you can recognize. <laughs> I mean, so much of the credit goes to Francesca, too. She put me in touch with everybody, because like, if, if she writes like Mila Jovovich on a list, like I have no idea as a 20-year-old how to contact her or any of these guys, really. And <laughs> Fran really brought it together and like made it happen. So I just need to give credit and thank Francesca and, and Vanina and Mario and Steve and yeah. everyone that helped. Absolutely. Me. And this has been described sort of as like an oral, uh, an oral history of sorts in terms of the different perceptions of David from different people. Was that always the plan going in in terms of how you're going to sort of tell the story? This was supposed to be a 10 minute student film. There was no, <laughs> <laughs> so no. But that's just kind of like, we learned as we went. We, right. Like my friends here, are, we started in school, they're in the audience, and we learned how to make a film as we went through the process. We right. didn't know any better, so we didn't know we shouldn't do it that way. But right. we did. <laughs> you did a great job. Um, right there in the middle, please. Ah. <laughs> yes. Francesca. Seemed so he seemed so naive and but he was determined and um, it it built this relationship between us a little bit of love and a little bit of annoyance <laughs> um, but honesty and his perseverance and all all of you all of you who remember David there's so many people here. I mean, if you were to all raise your hands, how many of you knew David? I mean, I'm really curious wow. to see, you know, wow. And this is a young kid who touched everybody's life, my son. That's great. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have time for maybe one more question. I see you right there, please. Yes. Yeah, so uh, let me just quickly repeat, how did the fashion industry um, respond to David's disease? Did, they, did you guys know about it? How, you know, talk a little bit about that. Um, nobody really... Oh. Thank you. Nobody really knew about it. Um, I actually found out once he had started working um, from Fran, and because... I used to, I'm sorry, I used to represent David as his agent. So there's a point where photographers start to work, re, um, you know, they get, there's a demand for them. And I started booking him and Fran had to say, well, you do realize that he has to have transfusions every, um, you know, specific periods of time. So, and to slow down with um, the way that I was booking him. So he, when David walked into a room, you were just kind of confronted by how much life he had in him. So nobody knew. Nobody knew at all, really, apart from people who were kind of close to him. And, um, and he projected so much that he was part of a scene. He was the center of a scene. So 
he was also quite private, so as much as he was very public, um, he had a core um, group of people around him, so nobody really knew him. As you saw in the movie, um, the, he never even like talked about it. He worked in our office, in our agency for a little bit, and at times you would look at him and you would feel like he, you know, he's experiencing some sort of pain. But his attitude about life and actually creating and, and, and being um, the fun person for all of us to interact with was what his, was his goal. It was, he never, I, I don't even remember him once complaining about it, other than you can just kind of feel sometimes that that, that was part of his life and that he had just accepted, I think just like Vanina said and his family said, that, that probably when he was very young, he, he didn't understand but as he started to mature, he, he just realized that he had to cope with it. And I think the other thing about it was that his impression about the media, and you know, it start, the, the film starts that way, um, you know, in, in everything that happens in life, something really positive comes out, right? So he obviously, we didn't want to lose him, but he changed the world in so many ways. I mean, I know that for myself, it started a whole big um, movement towards getting the girls in, into programs and helping them and being conscious of the fact that this is not just something you could just sweep under the carpet anymore, that we have to actually talk about it. Um, but also, I think that as a result of his passing, Fran took it upon herself to really make, become an advocate for, for his illness. And that also was a huge contribution to his family's commitment to having all of us understand what he had to live with. Great. Well, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we do have to wrap things up, but I want to thank you all so much for being part of this film, for bringing it to Doc NYC. Thank you for See No Evil. Thank you. And thank you, Fran. Thank you very much.